Welcome back. You've met our next guest before a number of years ago. She was with us along with her husband, Beth and Brad Thorpe created the Mitchell Thorpe Foundation after the death of their son at 18 years old. They wanted to take their grief and turn it into good in the world. And they've been doing that with amazing success. And you can go find more information about the Mitchell Thorpe Foundation at mitchellthorpefoundation at mitchellthorpe.org. Sorry about that. We'll put it on the screen. But right now, Beth has taken advantage of the last couple of years with COVID and getting quiet and listening to her inner voices. She is an author, a philanthropist. She is a mother on a mission to help others, um, especially children who are fighting difficult and unknown diseases like she did. And she's the co-founder and executive director of the Mitchell Thorpe Foundation. She is now the author of the book you see behind her, A New Creation. Beth, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me back. It is a thrill. And I'm always so happy to bring our guests back, especially when the good that they're doing in the world is just yielding more good in the world. So let's start, let's start for the viewers who didn't see the original broadcast, but tell us about the Mitchell Thorpe Foundation. Oh, absolutely. Well, the foundation was formed in memory of our precious son, Mitchell, and um, it was very long, hard journey, five years of in and out of different hospitals throughout the nation looking for a diagnosis and a cure for what was ailing him at the time. He was a healthy boy um, that when he was born into the world, uh, there was nothing wrong. We hardly ever went to the doctor for, you know, maybe occasional earache. So to have something of this nature, um, that devastating of, of the head pain that he was having as that's where it started and trying to find a cure of what was causing all that was a journey in itself which i write about in the book but um just to speed things up along five years later he passed symptoms came on at age 13 he passed at 18 and he was still undiagnosed to his death so that was very heart-wrenching and people would say to me how do you go on? How do you do this with not knowing? How come you're not angry at God? I mean, how are you doing this? And so I think for us, it's like, to me, the enemy messed with the wrong mama and papa bear. And it just- I fueled, love that line. And it's so true. <laughs> it just fueled our fire that he messed with the wrong person. And we wanted to take this tragedy and turn it into something at the end, just so beautiful and what has come of it. And that's how the Mitchell Thorpe Foundation was born. So again, in my deepest pain of grief, when I was going through it, when Mitchell passed, it took literally for your listeners, you know, grief is a tough thing. I mean, it's, it hits everyone differently. They usually say the deeper the love of that person, the, the harder the grief is and to come right. out of it. So for me, it took literally two years and it required therapy. It required people for us to help um, my husband and I to, to be together, to go through the forgiveness um, of everything that we need to forgive people, forgive the doctors who couldn't figure it out, forgive people who said things that they shouldn't have said. And, you know, all those things that get built up. So we went through this whole healing process and a restoration process till I came out of the other end where I felt truly hearing the voice of God tell me, this is not the end. This is the beginning. And I sat up and I thought, you know, that was a clear thing. I thought, what does that mean? I didn't know what that meant. And it really was when my husband was, um, uh, for your viewers, you know, we are uh, faith people. We, he was sitting at church and he felt a similar message that we needed to start something to help other families going through what we went through. So when he came home to tell me that, it was like like a year or so in, I'm still grieving. He says, I feel really strong that we should start a foundation to help other families going through what we went through because there was nothing like that when we were walking it, which we would love to have had something. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I said, you wanna do what? <laughs> you wanna do what? I said, we don't know anything about running a foundation. But then we just, then I just, stopped in my tracks and I began to listen. I said that voice again, maybe that's what he meant by 
this is not the end, this is the beginning. And sure enough, that was the beginning. So the foundation was started in 2009. And our mission is to support families with children with life threatening illnesses, diseases and disorders by bringing financial, emotional and resource support to them. And you have done just that. And tell us a little bit about some of your success stories to date. Wow. Well, today, you know, here we are 13 years later, the foundation has given back over 2.6 million and counting as we keep doing this back into the community to help families and children um, fighting for their morrows. And we do that through our programs that we developed over the years. Uh, our first is our medical and home assistance which covers anything that is not under insurance or and home assistance would be obviously keeping a roof over their head, food on the table, lights on just to survive. Because for your audience, one, one parent has to quit their job, right? So they have to stay by that child to advocate and be there. And then that loss of income, but those bills don't stop. Mm -hmm. And those medical bills on top of your normal bills, it just is a downward spiral effect that hits families and the stress is beyond measure. The second one is our healing and rehabilitation program. So we found when we were doing the foundation, many families wanted to continue their therapy out once they left the hospital. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is out of pocket expenses. And we also cover counseling, which is huge for the family for trauma, mostly for the affected child going through it. But again, the whole family unit, even right down to sibling support. So we cover sibling hiring school tutors, whatever that kid is to create that sense of normalcy in a, you know, not so normal environment. Very, very not trying. normal environment, yeah. I would say, right? Exactly. But we've had a hundred percent success rate in keeping families together and not end in divorce or separation, which is huge since our founding. Now, granted, not everyone comes to us married. We have single parents I, and I have no idea how they're doing it, raising three or four children. And then they have a child that's ill or has cancer or something. So it's devastating. Our third program is our wheelchair conversion van. So we've honored our sixth van in collaboration with some of our partners. Not all our children need it, but those that do, it's a beautiful thing to, because they need to be transported safely mm -hmm. when they're wheelchair bound children. And the last program was kind of a wonderful thing that came out of it is our youth leadership council. And what that was is we found that a lot of kids throughout the community and the schools wanted to come out to all of our events, which is our 5k run walk every year and our grand slam for Mitchell baseball tournament. And they need to build up community service hours, right? So they like helping kids, kids like helping kids. So we train them from eighth grade to 12th in servant leadership development skills. So they get training in that as well as boots on the ground with us and the foundation to spread our mission to be there and to see what their their efforts i'd like to see their efforts tangible that they can see where their efforts are going everybody likes to know that the work they're doing is resulting in something tangible and you i mean all of your work has been so directed at immediate gratification the immediate success so that the money and the effort go directly to the people in need and congratulations because i know it has not been easy i know and this just recently we uh, were always humbled but we were honored with the 2022 community impact award and then in 2020 right before COVID hit nonprofit of the year so those are some wonderful accolades. yeah we've had a lot of accolades so we're very humbled by that but for us it makes us realize that yeah all this hard work it is paying off people are seeing and make seeing the difference it is making an impact and you are definitely on a trajectory i know that the foundation was a first step and I and you and I have talked about how the the quiet time of COVID was a blessing in certain ways for so many of us that just the slowing down, the quieting of our lives allowed for new creativity and new projects. And yeah. so I really do want to step into your big new creation is the book that you've just written that I believe was released yesterday. Yeah. And Congratulations. And so a new creation, finding meaning in the midst of tragedy. And tell us a little bit about how that came about. Oh, yeah, that was an amazing process, too. So I knew and again, it was a we had our last event in February 2020. And 
March hit and everything was shut down, changed businesses and nonprofits, as we know today, some didn't even survive. But in me, I didn't panic because I knew in my heart that when all our events got canceled, things got quiet, as you said, it was always in my heart to write the story. Over the years, people kept telling me, you have to tell your story. You've got to tell your story. This is so many different things that have happened. You have to, when you hear that enough, you're like, I know, I just need the time. And so that was perfect time for me. It was solitude. And I have to give credit to my sister, Cheryl, because early on when Mitchell passed, it was three years in, and she was just so incredible about, she said, you know, I'm blown away as your sister, how much your story and just Mitchell has brought people closer to God. I said, you're, this is going to be a book one day. And I'm like, I'm three years and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. So she got excited, started writing a little outline, you know? So here I am, you know, during COVID, I blow the dust off it. You know, Cheryl, what, what did you write? So I kind of then got to it. And I just, again, that still small voice in me hearing as the faithful woman that I am, God speak to me saying, daughter, it's time to write our story. And when you hear God, that voice, and I don't hear it too often, but when you do, and you know so clearly that where did that come from? It just came pouring out of my heart to my mind, to my fingers, and was just flowing out of me like rivers of living water. As I went through from the beginning for your audience, it's our memoir of how we met, to who Mitchell was, to everything that happened, to the beautiful thing that came out of it. It is a story of love, perseverance, trial, hardship, how to overcome, there's a title called Overcomers, all those wonderful treasures that um, people will get out of the book. But it was a 15-month process. It was when people would say we write a book, I mean, it's truly a labor of love. I mean, nine months writing it, six months with my editor, rewriting it, and then submitting. Then the next process, they say when writing a book, they say writing a book is hard. They say, try to get it published. <laughs> and you're like, oh my gosh. So then, you know, you're looking through, oh my gosh, where do I begin to send this book to? Who would even want it? You know, does it have some meat? So I sent it to um, my first on the list, which was Morgan James Publishing out of New York. It's a big publishing house. And I thought, you know, go big or go home, right? <laughs> so you, know, you have to start there. Otherwise, if I don't get published, I'll self-publish. Yeah. And honestly, Lauren, I said, I couldn't believe it. I got the congratulations letter the week of Mitchell's passing in November. And it, I'm just, it's framed on my wall here. I'm, I'm waving it to the heavenlies, weeping, <laughs> telling my sister, Cheryl, oh my gosh, Mitch, God, we got it done. It's like, it was like, I was like doing my happy dance. You know, I've never felt so elated in my life. Cause then you tell people, oh, you got a book published on your first submission. That's unheard of. <laughs> first time yeah. author, unheard of. It is like unheard of <laughs> and it is worthy of huge congratulations. And also just the way you've told the story now, I know there are a lot of our viewers who have a book to write. They have a story to tell and maybe haven't thought they had the time or haven't thought they knew how to do it. But these are the stories that inspire beyond the inspiration of your own story. It's just the knowing that it's time for something to be born something new to come forward and you just put one foot in front of the other and you make it happen it was just you know I don't know but for me everything is in God's perfect timing and I wanted to push it out at my 10-year anniversary with the foundation I thought oh that'd be great but nothing it wasn't flowing again it wasn't time yet that's like I was stuck and I you know when the people say you have writer's block I mean nothing was flowing so it's a it took that quietness. So, you know, COVID to me was a blessing to shut everything down. And I know many artists, there's so many creative works that are happening and coming out of that. Sure. And it's a lesson for all of us to know, to quiet our world sometimes, to just get things done that are brewing in your hearts of your readers or in your audience and just, you know, and get it done. It's, it's a project, but get it done. You can do it. No, absolutely. And I also, I, you and I talked about this a little before we went on air, is that this particular show has come together very organically 
under an umbrella of taking your grief and turning it to good and really doing good in the world. And you guys did that with the foundation and you moved forward. And again, you'd never run a foundation. You didn't know what you were doing, but you were willing to listen and you were willing to move forward in faith. And everyone in their own faith and in the own voice that that everyone's going to hear. But I know we all have that little voice that talks to us. Yeah. So whatever it is to you, but now, taking the next step, because in book form, you're telling a bigger story. People do get to know you, the pictures of your family and the pictures of Mitchell. And, and it's all, you know, it's all come together in, in a new way that feels like, again, you're lifting that grief into an even higher level of good. And congratulations and thank you. Yeah, you know, it's so true because on the back of the book, it does say how the power of one life can cause or a ripple effect that goes on and on and on to touch so many others. So to me, and when I was trying to write the ending in the book, I thought, wow, there really is no ending because Mitchell's spirit is alive and well, and we're continuing to touch so many more other lives and children and families we meet along the way. It's just been unbelievable the amount of families and children we've been able to be with to help and and to it's just and i write i i couldn't write about every family we helped but you know there's a handful of them in the book of telling their story of how we touched them and how they came into being to meet us and so that's the ripple effect and we all can do that yeah so yeah. and and you know pain and suffering we all go through it in life, we can't escape it. It's just part of life. But in a way, it does change you. Mm -hmm. It makes people stronger. Um, for me, it did. It changed me. It transformed me. It took what I used to love to do in the fashion industry and now turned it totally around to be nothing in but philanthropy and helping people. So there is good that can come out of pain and suffering. Um, and you can turn it for good. So I want to I want to reframe that for you because you and I were in the fashion industry together, yeah. and and what you are doing. So our whole our whole mission there was to help people show up as their very best. Yeah. And what you're doing right now in terms of showing up in a new way, showing up as who you are now, really putting yourself forward in the knowing that this is what you're meant to do right now and you're doing it. You're not saying, no, 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 I'm busy over here. You're right. saying, oh, wait, that's right. This is, this is me now and this is my best me now. And that is another level of example to the world. And so I, I give you all the credit in the world for being willing to stay the course and keep moving forward. And so I really would like to tell our viewers where they can find your book yeah. and hope that they will run, not walk to the nearest opportunity yeah. to read a new creation. It's a beautiful memoir. It's beautifully written. Congratulations. It's an amazing story that could have been any one of us, right? It could be yeah. anyone. And the way you've shared it is just allowing us to go through the process with you and then take the information and use it however it works for us exactly exactly that's my hope so uh your audience can find the book anywhere where books are sold it was just released worldwide yesterday so online barnes and noble anywhere where you buy books but if you would like a personal autograph signed copy go to my website anewcreation.org and i'll personally sign one for um, the audience and get that out to you with a personal message from me to you so anewcreation.org yeah. and there's the and book. i've got my side copy so thank you very much You're and i hope everyone will get theirs beth thorpe thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing such an important message thank you and we'll be right back.